Bella, we're gonna try really hard not to offend anyone with this video, but we totally are. If Bella was a human, she would totally sell MLM products. <laughs> so we've all gotten that message from like some girl from our high school we had like one class with who we haven't talked to in eight years that's like, hey babe, how are you? Have you ever thought about being your own boss and being a partner with this amazing company? These messages usually come from someone who's in an MLM or multi-level marketing, network marketing. You sign up for their company, you sell their product to family and friends and get a commission on each sale. Sounds harmless enough. But what makes MLMs different than just being like a brand rep for a company is that the real money to be made with an MLM is getting people to sign up as a distributor under you and then getting a cut of all the sales that they make. So it isn't really about the product. It's about getting as many people as possible to sign up under you and pay a big starter fee. And actually over 99% of people who sign up for an MLM never turn a profit, which is really sad. And they prey on women a lot. And I can't legally say that these are pyramid schemes because a pyramid scheme is when there's no product and it's just all about getting people to sign up under you. These are multi-level marketing companies that are structured in a way where there's a large amount of people at the bottom and then it gets progressively smaller as you get to the top so that only the people at that tip top are actually making money. This sort of pointy triangular business structure. I'm not really gonna go any further into the ethics of it though. I just wanna talk about the products. A YouTuber named Tiffany Ferg, who I absolutely love, made a really great video kind of breaking down what MLMs are and how they work. So I will link that in the description. But what I wanna see is what are the products that these MLM distributors are selling actually like? Are they actually any good? And how do you even order them since they're only sold through individual distributors? Like there's no store. There's not really usually even a website where you can just buy the product off of. Am I gonna have to meet up with a stranger to pick up my products? Or do I just give a stranger my address, my phone number, my credit card information and hope for the best? So this video is gonna be an unbiased test and review of a bunch of products from multi-level marketing companies. And I just wanna say, if you're someone who's in an MLM, I'm not hating on you. It's the structure of these companies that I have a problem with, not the individual people who sell for them. I just wanna give it a good old college try. So let's get into it. So the first company we're trying is LuLaRoe. And this is kind of the company that inspired this video idea because they make one size fits all leggings. And if you guys know me, you know that I don't think one size really ever fits all unless it's like a big giant like kimono or something that can really work for a variety of body shapes and body structures. And leggings are not one of those things. So we had to find an individual distributor. There isn't just like one main website that you can search all the products on. And all of the distributors had different stocks of items. So like the prints varied, the sizing varied, the leggings are one size fits all, but their tops are numbered. And then they also have like a plus size leggings line. So I guess it's like two sizes fit all. They have like the standard leggings and then the tall and curvy leggings. And then all of their like tops and other products are regular sizing. So we had to sort through a lot of different distributors to find products that would work for me. But I actually ordered one pair of leggings in the like regular one size fits all and one in the tall and curvy. That way I can compare since I am like kind of in between plus size and standard sizing. Also, they like don't do plain leggings. Like there was no like plain black. It was like the craziest patterns I've ever seen. Like so over the top. Can't imagine someone actually wearing these. So in the tall and curvy, I just got these like patterned leggings that were $25. And then in the standard size leggings, I actually have a collection that was licensed with Disney, which seems like way too legit for an MLM, but I do love Disney, so I couldn't resist. And these ones were $30. Like I said, one size fits all. And then with the patterned leggings, we got the classic tee and a size large to go with it. It was $35. Again, they only had the t-shirts in very bold colors and prints. And then we got a Disney tee to go with the Disney leggings. This was in a size 12 and it was $26. And then we got a stretchy knit dress in a size large that was $65. $5, and a high low tunic in a size extra large that was $35. So lots of variety here. I think their leggings are what they're most known for, but I wanted to try everything, give a full all encompassing review. So we placed the order on the products. It was $233.82 and we had to buy it 
it through an individual distributor and they match you with a distributor in your area. So you have the option to either meet up with them in person or have it shipped to your house. We did the shipping. And LuLaRoe also has a very clear aesthetic. Like it is very, very bright, very over the top and uh, very outside of my personal style but I'm excited to try it. So we just gotta wait for it to get here. Let's get into the next product. So the next one we are gonna try is Lip Sense, which I, this is the one that I actually have people DM me about all the time. It seems like every girl I went to high school with is a distributor for them. So we had to go on to the Lip Sense website and find a distributor, but it was a lot easier to find one that was gonna work for me because since it's makeup, it's less personalized than clothing. And from what we saw on the Lip Sense website, it's not just like one like tube of lip stuff that you put on your lips and then you're done. It's like a three step process. You need like, first you need the color, then you need like the gloss that goes on top and then you need a special remover to take it off. So we got all three of those. The actual color that we got is called apple cider. It was $25 and then we got the matte gloss, which was $20 and the pearl gloss, which was also $20. And then the lip color remover was $10. So in total, just for like one color and two different gloss options, it was $88.86. This better be some dang good lip stuff. Their whole gimmick is like that this stuff does not come off. Like you can wear it all day. You never have to retouch it. And you literally need a special product to take it off. Like that's how tough it's supposed to be. So I'm interested to see if it actually does stick that much. And um, if it's that heavy duty of a product, like what's it actually gonna do to my lips? <laughs> So the next one is Stella and Dot. And this is another clothing one that I actually haven't heard too much about before this. Their website seems a lot more normal. It just kind of looks like a standard boutique website. And you actually can order straight from the website, but it's it, it, it kind of is and it kind of isn't. You decide what you wanna order, but you can see like the whole stock, which is nice. You don't have to like pick a distributor and then see their stock. And then based on what items you order, it matches you up with the distributor who has those items in stock. Which if you're gonna be an MLM, who sells products through distributors. I feel like this is much more user friendly, but everything was so expensive. You'll see, let's just get into it. The first item is a freaking kimono and it was $99. I got this one in an extra large slash extra extra large and I love kimonos. And honestly, I'm okay with spending more money on a product that is going to last me forever, is really high quality and fits me really well. So $99, yeah, that is a crazy high price for a kimono. But if it really is that amazing, I'm okay with it. But we'll see if the quality actually matches up to the price. And then we also got the filigree earrings. These were $29. And one of the interesting things that we found going on the Stella and Dot website is they really don't have any like basics and they also don't sell any bottoms like at all. It's mostly like overcoats, kimonos, cardigans, and then a lot of jewelry. So we got the most kind of like basic tee that we could. This is the going places tee. I got it in an extra large. So we got those three items. They matched us up with the distributor who shipped it right to my house. And once it gets here, we will be able to try it out. So the next one we were gonna try is Herbalife, Herbalife, however you wanna pronounce it. This is one of the MLMs that's been around forever. That's another thing is multi-level marketing is not like a new thing. It's been around for a really long time when people would like go and do door-to-door -door sales. But with social media, it's just become more prevalent and more annoying. <laughs> so I thought trying Herbalife would be okay because they're not like a super over the top like diet company like a lot of the supplement companies are, but they have like protein chips. And I love a good protein shake. So I thought we'd try it. But then I went onto their website and oh my gosh, their website, just to order some protein powder, just a little thing of protein powder, you had to sign like a multi-page contract, basically signing your life away. Skylar was placing the order on this one because she was gonna have to meet up with them in person to get the product. And Skylar, they have not stopped calling you. No, I have probably gotten like 10 emails and phone calls from freaking Herbalife. And we didn't even order. No, <laughs> like I didn't even go through with the contract. I didn't even look at their products. They just got my information and have not stopped bothering me. So instead we decided to order from another MLM that I've heard a lot about and that is Sensi. This is kind of like a bath and body works type company. They had like candles and like 
bath products and like a lot of like little things like that that honestly I'm a huge fan of. I have way too many candles, way too many little scent plugins in my house. So I feel like this could actually be a good one. And their website was, their website was okay. It seemed a lot more user friendly. It was kind of like Stella and Dot where it actually did look like a legit website. And they also had a, like a collaboration with Disney. I guess Disney has a thing with MLMs, but I, of course I had to get some of the Disney products. So I got the Ariel Under the Sea Scent Circle. This is just like a car air freshener and this was $3.25. And then I love, bath products like I spent way too much money at Lush so I got the Endless Sea bath bomb this was eight dollars and also the Endless Sea Scentsy Soak for twelve dollars and then they were really pushing this like new product it was all over their website called Scentsy Go my understanding of it is it's like a little coffee cup looking thing that's like an air freshener that you can just take with you so that like everything around you smells good like it's not a perfume it's not meant to make you smell good it's meant to make you like like the smell of whatever room you're in, I think. It's like a little pod that you can sniff. And I could see the application for this. Maybe like a porta potty, you know, bring out your little sensey sniff or sensey go and just give it a whiff. <laughs> Maybe you're on a crowded subway and there's a man who didn't put on deodorant next to you. Sensey go. Just give it a sniff. Not a bad idea for a product, but it was expensive. It was $35 for like the little canister. And then the actual scent was $10. We got one called Blue Grotto. I always prefer like kind of like beachy, light, crisp scents. So we wanted to go with ones that actually sounded like they'd be something I would like to give it a fair shake. So lots of variety at Scentsy. We have all of our orders placed. Now we just have to play the waiting game of seeing when the products get here so we can give them a good try. Okay, so we just got our package in from LuLaRoe. I don't really remember everything that we ordered, so it's gonna be a surprise for me too. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, first thing I see in the bag is this print, <laughs> which I don't know if it's gonna look worse in, in person or uh, on the camera, but let me just tell you, oh my, Oh, I am trying my absolute hardest to go into this with an open mind and give like as unbiased, as objective of a review as I can. But in my opinion, uh, this print is, it's not it. Um, I will say that the fabric feels pretty soft. It's really cottony. It's like most leggings that I have are more of that kind of like spandex lycra material. And then the cotton leggings that I do have feel really thick so that they aren't like showing my underwear or being like see-through or anything. These, I. They don't look see-through when I stretch them, but it does feel very light. Oh, and these are the tall and curvy ones. So we'll see how these fit compared to the other ones, the regular ones. And then this is the t-shirt that we got to go with those leggings, which, oh my gosh, this is gonna be a look. <laughs> All right, so aesthetically, I'm not personally feeling this at all. The legging print is so much and I just don't really like the design of the shirt. I also don't feel like the shirt is particularly flattering on me. It's not making me feel super confident. It's like hugging my stomach a lot and it's kind of long and it's just not for me. The quality I would say is like kind of average on the top. Like it's not amazing. It's not bad. I would expect this kind of quality at, you know, let's say like Target, American Eagle. Obviously like my opinions on the design and the aesthetics and the look are really subjective just to me. I personally don't like it but I would love to know what you guys think down in the comments like if this is your style if you would wear it or not and then the leggings let's just talk about the leggings these are the tall and curvy ones and I will say they are not see-through at all like even if I pull on them there is no amount of skin showing, nothing at all. That's great. The material does feel really good on these leggings. They're soft, they're comfortable. However, um, the one size thing is a big issue. It bunches a lot at the ankles, if you can see that. And because these are one size fits all for tall and curvy, and I'm on like the lower size end of their size range for these, I have zero support in the waist. Like they're already kind of falling down. I would have to be hiking them up all day. It looks like there's supposed to be a support band here, but it is not supportive at all. Also because they're for tall people, the support band is way higher than it usually would be on leggings on me. Like the material feels pretty nice. I could see myself like layering these under a dress or a sweater if they came in black and actually came in my size. But in this print, and this sizing, I just, I don't, I don't see how leggings can be one size fits all. This, this is gonna be a no from me, dog. <laughs> Ooh, I see Disney print. So let's do that next. These leggings, again, very loud pattern and whoa, those are small. I mean, 
it's one size. So like, yeah, this would fit someone of like, what would you say, Skylar? What does this look like? Maybe like a two? Yeah, that looks like a like a size smaller, extra small. So yeah, on my body, not sure how these are gonna fit and if they stretch, then are they gonna be see-through? But we will find out. And I think this is the Disney shirt that goes with it. So it's like a baseball tee with little minis on it. It, it feels like average quality right now, just feeling it, but wait. This says it's a 12. This looks really small. I mean, I know sizing varies a lot on like store to store, but I don't think this is gonna fit, but let's try it. What the actual heck? <laughs> okay, let's start with this top because I am 99% sure this is a children's size 12. If it's not a children's top, that is a serious issue. I mean, it's an issue both ways, but if this is meant to be a woman size 12, I, I've got a bone to pick with someone over at LuLaRoe. If this was like a, a kind of like loose fitting baseball tee, I could see myself wearing this with leggings to Disneyland. Not these leggings, but leggings. Which speaking of, let's talk about these leggings. Um, I'm first of all, pleasantly surprised that they are not showing any of my skin or that they're like see-through and showing my underwear. Like they are thick enough or like the construction of these leggings is high quality enough that they aren't see-through even on me who is a size 14 and at the end of their one size fits all standard leggings. So that's good. Um, the length is actually like perfect on me. The length is fine, but they are pretty small on me and pretty tight. You can see that the pattern of the Mickeys is like stretching more than it's meant to, kind of like distorting the image because I am too big for these leggings. If I tried these on in store and these were like in my size, I would size up probably two sizes. The support band, I would say hits me in the right spot, but it doesn't offer any support. And again, with the material, it does feel very nice and soft and silky smooth. The print is so much, like so, so much. I feel like these would be cute on like a little girl, like a six year old girl running around Disney, maybe, you know, like layered under a little dress or like a princess t-shirt, like I could see that. But on me as an adult, I wouldn't wear something this loud, but I, I mean, maybe it's somebody else's style. Again, style is subjective aesthetics are subjective. They're not my cup of tea, but let me know down in the comments if they are yours. You know what, actually, I've never tried doing a poll on YouTube. So I'm gonna put a poll up there and tell me if just the design, just the aesthetic of these leggings is something you would wear, yes or no. I just gotta get out of this. I, I'm so uncomfortable on both top and bottom. Next. And then we have this like floral. See, this looks like a 12. This looks like my size. Oh, it's an extra large big kind of like smocked floral printed top. So I'll just try that top on with one of the other pairs of leggings, see how it looks. Okay, so I put this on and I don't immediately hate it. And I turned to Skylar and I'm like, you know what? Actually, this one might not be that bad. And she's like, Sierra, if you tried that on in store, you would not buy that or like that. It's just because the other tops have been so bad. This one is like in comparison, pretty okay. So the material I would say feels like low to average, maybe like Walmart quality, like maybe Target, like a little bit less than that. It's just kind of cottony, nothing special about it. Not like the same material as the leggings or anything. The fit I actually do like. I love like longer shirts like this that are a little bit shorter in the front and then longer in the back. I feel like it's cute to wear with like black leggings or gray leggings, not printed leggings, but the print again is pretty loud and kind of like, kindergartner-esque like I feel like this is totally something my mom would have gotten me at Gymboree when I was like five and I would have looked adorable in it as a five-year-old but for my personal taste now print it's not it's not for me and then last but not least I think this is yes so this is a dress a little like aqua and red color blocked dress it feels pretty nice quality I'm not the biggest fan of like the colors together but this was one of the only like somewhat muted not crazy patterned items on LuLaRoe so I wanted to try some Something that was a little bit less out there. So let's see how this one works. It has pockets. Let's start with some positives. There are pockets in this dress. We love a dress with pockets. Um, other than the pockets, I'm not feeling this dress. The material is like very thick 
thick and kind of clingy. I don't feel very comfortable in it. I do like that it's more fitted on the top, has some waist definition, and then it has a looser fitting skirt, but the length of the skirt is kind of awkward on me. I'm like five, four and three quarters and it hits like right at my knees. I feel like I usually like things to either be above my knee or like a midi skirt that's between like my knee and my calf or like floor length. And this is just kind of like an awkward in between length for me. Was this one size or was it one size fits all? That was a size large, but also it was $65. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe this is $65. Also, it runs a little big. If this is a large, I would say if anything I could size down and I'm almost always an extra large very rarely am I like smaller or bigger than that right now I'm pretty much a true XL and this I would say definitely runs big in terms of the design I feel like it looks like a Halloween costume I feel like I look like I'm trying to be like Snow White or like Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas or something like that like just the design looks very costumey it doesn't look like something I would wear on a normal day at all. I would say I'm pretty disappointed by LuLaRoe. I have an issue with the one size fits all leggings. Like Skylar and I were talking about this. Places like Brandy Melville that do one size. I mean, Brandy Melville is problematic, don't get me wrong, but at least it says one size fits small. They're not trying to say they can fit this wide range of sizes. And LuLaRoe is saying that their leggings can fit from a size, you know, I think they said zero on the website or whatever the size range is right here. I'll put it on the screen. And I just don't think that's realistic. It's not gonna fit two very different bodies the same way. The quality of the leggings I would say is pretty good, but the other stuff is just kind of like average or subpar. So LuLaRoe personally, I would not be ordering from them again. I think the only reason it would be worth ordering from them is if loud, like vibrant patterned leggings are your thing. I, I think it could be hard to find leggings like this in store, but everything else is just kind of meh. And it's expensive. It's very expensive and hard to find the exact pair or like design that you want. Okay, I got my Lip Sense package today. So I have the color that we ordered. This is apple cider. This is the pearl gloss that goes on top of the color. And then we also got a matte gloss. So I will try both. And then the oops remover. The thing about Lip Sense that I read online and that I've heard too, is that basically like when you normally put on like a, a lip product, it would be both the color and like the moisturizer, like whether it's matte or whether it's like glossy. But Lip Sense is like just the color and when you put this on, it's supposedly like really dry. And then the gloss you put on after, and you don't ever have to reapply the color throughout the day, or at least you're not supposed to have to. You can just reapply the gloss after you like eat or something. So it's pretty expensive for all four of these. I guess once you have the two glosses, then you could just get other colors. So it's pretty much like the upfront cost that's more, but even still, these were pretty expensive. So um, let's go to the bathroom and try this on. I'm gonna wear it all day and see what it feels like, see if it actually lasts as long as they say it does. And then tomorrow I am gonna wear my regular lip stuff that I usually wear. My current go-to is the Tarte Tardiest Lip Paint and it's in a similar shade so we can compare the two and see if this one is actually as good as their distributors claim. Apply in one direction, <laughs> one direction, <laughs> beginning with the outside corner of the mouth. Apply three layers letting each dry for three to five seconds. Finish with your favorite lip sense gloss. Okay. Oh my gosh. We have like rolling alcohol. Okay, huh? It hurts so hard. I feel like I can't call on this yet. It's making my health on this side so hard. Nothing got on this. I feel like it's kind of starting to dry. I can talk normal, almost. Okay, Um, none of the color transferred onto the gloss, which is good. That means the gloss was fully dry. It hurt, it burned. It felt like rubbing alcohol, even though I couldn't really talk and express that to you guys very well. But once it dried, like it doesn't hurt now. It was just kind of like stinging as I put it on. But honestly, if that actually makes this stick to my lips, like through everything, I feel like it's kind of low key worth it. Cause it wasn't like super painful. It was just like a little bit, a little bit of stinging. So I am not bringing the color with me throughout my day today, but I am gonna bring my glosses. Here is a close up of the application. Ignore the giant zit in the corner of my mouth. I think it looks pretty good and I really like the color. Okay, so Skylar and I are out at sushi. Ignore my outfit. Well, it's kind of hard to ignore. I'm dressed like Hannah Montana. It's for another video, but uh, let's, uh, let's do a little straw test. 
No transfer onto the straw, that's pretty good. My avocado roll just got here. I've been having a little bit of edamame, but I haven't really like eaten yet. Some of the gloss has started to fade, but it still feels pretty moisturized. So we'll see after I actually like eat a full meal, how glossy it still feels and if I need to reapply. But the color is like fully on, like no issues with the color at all. This is post lunch. This video is weird because there's so many close ups of my mouth. <laughs> I didn't notice any color transfer at all on like my straw or anything, but it does does look like some of the color is starting to fade a little bit. I do feel like I need to reapply my gloss also. At one point I like licked my lips like as I was eating and they taste like rubbing alcohol. Like it tastes really like bad. All right, it is the end of my day. I actually just showered and everything, but I didn't like scrub my lips at all. It is about 10 o'clock at night right now. So almost a full 12 hours. And I noticed around six after dinner, it was my little brother's birthday. So we had pizza for dinner. I looked in the mirror at one point when I went to the bathroom and I noticed that like there was hardly any of the lip scents left. I did reapply the gloss only twice throughout the day, once after my lunch and once around four o'clock. Again, I love that the week that I'm doing a video with close-ups of my lips is when I have a huge zit in the corner <laughs> of my mouth. As you can see, there's really only like little, you know, dry flakes of the color left. Other than that, it's completely worn off. Now the fact that these are sold through like private distributors means that some of them just make these ridiculous claims that the company can't be held liable for. I've seen people say that it'll last 48 hours, 24 hours. I would say this one solidly lasted about seven hours, which is pretty long, but at the 11 hour mark that I'm at right now, it, I would definitely need to reapply if I was gonna like go out or something. So it is a pretty long wear lipstick. I will say it's completely smudge proof. Never once did it like smudge on to the rest of my face or transfer onto a straw. Now, because I did kind of like a nude color, it doesn't really matter that much that it's kind of like peely and flaky and mostly off. But if I was wearing like a bright red or something, it would look pretty crusty right now. <laughs> also the the tingling and the stinging when you put it on is you know mildly uncomfortable but a little bit concerning like I don't feel like a product should be stinging like that last thing I do have to do though is use the oops remover to take off what is left on my lips so it just says gently rub onto lip color and wipe clean all right hopefully this one doesn't sting you can see where the product transferred on here this is the first place I've seen it transfer so that means what's left of the product is getting taken off by this it doesn't sting by the way it's just like moisturizing. <laughs> huh? Huh? Just a little bit of the product came off onto this tissue. Like I said, there wasn't much left to wipe off, but what was left, it did take off. Okay, it is 10.57. I just finished doing my makeup and I am gonna put on my Tarte Tartiest Lip Paint in the shade Bestie. This is my current go-to. It's like a neutral nude shade that I feel like goes well with my skin tone. It's pretty easy to apply. Seems to last a pretty long time, but we will compare. And last night, what time did I do it? 10 o'clock? Yeah, at 10 o'clock tonight, we will see where this lipstick is after not reapplying it all day. Okay guys, it is now one o'clock. Here is the status of my lips with the Tarte product. I just had lunch and you can see that it's starting to fade a little bit on like the inner part of my lips, but it's still fully intact on the outside. Skylar calls this butthole lips when the inside is like the actual color of your lips, but the outside still has like the lip product. I'm getting a little bit of that effect, but other than that, it's looking okay. Okay, end of the day. It is actually 11 o'clock, so just a little bit later than yesterday, but I'm just kind of wrapping up my work. So as you can see, the lip paint is completely gone. There isn't really any pigment left on it. So it did wear off uh, a lot faster than the Lip Sense product. I would say around four o'clock it was almost completely gone. So not as long wear as the Lip Sense stuff. I'm honestly surprised. I don't know why in my head this stuff lasts longer. I guess I do reapply it a few times throughout the day. So I just don't really notice it is pretty buildable. I guess that Lip Sense stuff is longer wear than my other products significantly so actually. And I could see myself using the one that I have on a day where I'm, you know, out filming or at an event and I don't want to be worrying about my lipstick. I do feel like it's pretty low maintenance. You could reapply the gloss or you could not and the color's gonna pretty much stick for not as long as they say, but for a while. All right, so we got our package from Stella and Dot. This paper is very crinkly, so let me just open it up real quick. So this is, ooh, this is cute. This feels nice, little pocket tee. Oh wait, it's not a pocket, but it has like embroidery where a pocket would be. It says going places. This, I would say feels similar to Madewell quality. How much was this? That was $49. 
Okay, so $49, actually more expensive than Madewell would be, but the quality feels pretty nice, so we'll try this on. Okay, so I tucked the tee into these paper bag jeans from Target, and I actually really like this shirt. It feels high quality, it fits nice, even if I take it out. It's like kind of the perfect length for me, like I will definitely wear this. I like that it's a simple black tee, but has that little like bit of personality with the going places. I think the font that they use is really cute. I like that it's simple and like a fun little unique spin on a plain black tee. Like I feel like I could even tie it right here because there's enough fabric at the bottom. Totally, I'm gonna keep this and get a lot of use out of it but I would not pay $49 for this. I think 50 bucks for a black t-shirt is pretty ridiculous, but it is a nice t-shirt. If price isn't an object to you, I would recommend this. I think it's pretty nice. And then this kimono was $99. I have never paid a hundred bucks for a Komodo. So I expect it to be pretty amazing. Um, the material feels like pretty nice. Most of the kimonos that I have are more like sheer chiffon. This is like a, a cottony kimono. It's thicker, so let's try it on. So here is the kimono. Now I will say, unlike LuLaRoe, even though the Stella and Dot items are at a pretty high price point, you're getting a really good quality. Like the top was nice, the kimono feels really, really nice and well put together. Whereas LuLaRoe was a little bit more like, the leggings were good, but like the other stuff was hit and miss. The style is also just a lot more elevated and mature. I do really like the look of this kimono. I think the lace and the embroidery is really, really cute. I love the way it hits on my body. The only thing I'm not the biggest fan of is because of the white and how like cottony it is it does kind of look a little bit like a robe when you cross it in the front but it has a little clasp right here so I feel like this would be so cute as a beach cover-up. Like I love that you could clasp it like that. I'm definitely gonna keep this. I'm definitely gonna wear it. Would I pay $100 for this? No. However, I like that it's versatile. And again, as with the t-shirt, if price isn't an object, I think their stuff is pretty cute. And lastly, we have these earrings and these were $29. Little dangly like leaf earrings. I feel like these, <laughs> I feel like these, as I was saying, are pretty cute. Like, I like the design. I would totally pick these up if I saw them at like Target or something. Let me put them in real quick. The earrings feel really nice. They seem really high quality. They like hang comfortably. They look pretty, I think. Would I pay $29 for them? Maybe. But I don't think I would seek out earrings like this for $29. Like, I don't think I would go on their website and like see these and be like, I have to have them. But I'm definitely gonna get a lot of use out of these. I really like them. They're really pretty. Okay, so now that I've tried all of the Stella and Dot items, I do have to say these are really nice. I like the style. I like the quality. I would consider ordering from them again if I did see a specific item that I like absolutely wanted, but I don't think I would like go to the website and start like seeking out the products because they are really expensive and you do have to buy them from an individual distributor. So yeah, I still don't really agree with the ethics behind multi-level marketing, but in terms of just like an unbiased look at the product, Cell and Dot has really good products. Okay, so we just got the package from Sensi. So we have all of like the bath stuff that I'm gonna do and test tonight. But right now for today, we are gonna test out the smelling on the go stuff and the car freshener. We're about to go to lunch. It's Chipotle. Chipotle has a lot of scents. So uh, maybe Scentsy will give us a different scent. So this, it comes in this little box and let's see. Okay, so it has a charger on the inside. I hope I don't have to charge it because I want to go to Chipotle now. <laughs> and then this little like canister looking thing. And then we have the two cents that we got to go in it. Pop it in, let's see. Oh, there's no instructions. <laughs> Sweet. So, okay, so it has a yeah. USB port. Maybe your representative is just supposed to explain this. Yeah, maybe they are. Who was our representative? It said they were from Idaho. So, so we have to go all the way to Idaho to get someone to explain us why my like smelly thing as a USB plug. Okay, so I plugged it in and now there's a blinking light on it. So I'm assuming that means it does need to charge. Let me Google Sensi Go Charger. Charging instructions, there we go. Guess a lot of people are Googling the same thing. <laughs> charge the Sensi Go unit. Uh, initial charge takes six hours. What? Skylar, I'm pissed. We're supposed to go to Chipotle right now. We we'll have to get like a stinky dinner with the boys tonight. Oh, then... maybe that's a good idea. Where's like the or... stinkiest? Oh, we should make Beyond Burgers. Or I have Beyond Burgers. Have like a fart competition. <laughs> like the boys do that kind of stuff. Turn on the Sensi Go fan. Press and hold the fan button until the. Oh, it's like. Oh, that's why you have to charge it. It actually has a fan. I thought it was just like a smelly canister. Okay, it says Sensi Go solid when fully charged lasts approximately 10 hours. Okay, so you charge it for six hours on the initial charge. Then it says after that, it typically takes three hours to charge and then it lasts 
for, what did it say? 10 hours. It is interesting though, that there weren't any instructions in the box. Like I thought I was just being an idiot because I hate reading instructions. And I feel like if you hadn't used one of these before, you'd kind of need to know how to set it up. But I think the idea is that you're buying this from like a consultant in person usually. So they would be the one to explain to you how to use it and you wouldn't really need like an instruction manual. But we do still have this car freshener to test. So we'll bring this with us on our drive to Chipotle. Okay, Skylar, let's be honest. My car doesn't have like a perfect smell. <laughs> <laughs> my car is messy. It's not always the cleanest. There are some like salt and vinegar chip crumbs on the floor. This is true. This is <laughs> true. This is a good place to test our Scentsy Dis- Oh, I forgot this is Disney. Ariel Under the Sea scent circle. It's very cute. It is cute. I like that it's like Disney, but that you could show the Ariel or if you wanted to be a little bit more discreet, yeah. you could show the shell. That smells the, the really shell. good. Oh, I like, like that. Away. This was pretty uh, like adequately priced, right? Yeah, I like, think it was like a couple bucks. I feel like that's a good deal. Yeah. Like, and in, out of all the companies, I feel like Sensi was the easiest to order from. Like it just kind of looks like a Bed Bath & Beyond. Yeah, well, and if the other products that we're trying work well, I feel like this might be one where, yeah, MLMs are still kind of shady, yeah. but the product is maybe pretty good. Okay, we just got done at Chipotle. It smells so good in here. I know. I, I'm gonna give this one a 10 out of 10. Like this product in particular, I'm gonna go home and order a ton of stuff in this specific scent. And I love that they have Disney stuff too. That's super fun. I know. This is great. This is a good, I really like this scent. I really like this product. I like the price point. It's good. <laughs> All right, let's give these Scentsy bath products a try. Sorry, it's pretty loud in here, but I have my bath drawn. So here is our Endless Sea bath bomb. It is covered in like a little plastic wrap, so I need to take that off. All right, now I use Lush bath bombs mm, pretty frequently, maybe twice a month, once a month on like special relaxation occasions. So let's see how this one does. I'm out of the bath now, actually outside with my dogs, taking them out for the last time before I go to bed. When I first saw the bath bomb and it was like, you know, not super colorful, there wasn't like glitter, there wasn't really anything like special about like the way it looked aesthetically. I was like, meh, all right, you know, it's a fine bath bomb. It's not a lush bath bomb, but you know, it's okay. Dogs are barking, guess that's time to go inside. So I just wasn't super impressed with it at first, but then once I actually sat in the bath for a couple minutes, my skin started to feel so soft, like so silky smooth, so moisturized. I love baths, but I get bored after a little while, so I usually make it like maybe 15 minutes. I kid you not. I sat in that bathtub for, what time is it? 45 minutes. I'm also like a teeny bit sunburned right now and it was like soothing my sunburn. It was making my skin soft. When I got out, it felt like I had just like put lotion on. So I don't know what is in their bath bombs, if it's like oils or some sort of like serum or, or moisturizer, I don't know. But it felt really, really good. It may not have looked as amazing as a Lush bath bomb, but it felt better on my skin. I wouldn't buy this again just because like going through a distributor is such a hassle. Like I don't wanna have to like text someone about my order. I mean, I was able to order online. Well, Skylar was, Skylar did the ordering, but now like the Scentsy woman keeps texting her being like, hey, how do you like your products? I live in your city. Let me know if you wanna come smell some scents or pick up anything else. Like. I just wanna go to Target or to the mall and be able to buy what I wanna buy. Since he's been all right so far, I'm gonna try the, the soak tomorrow night just because I felt like I wouldn't be able to tell which product was doing which if I did both of them at once. So tomorrow we will try that. All right, my Scentsy Go is now fully charged. It's actually the next day. I let this charge overnight just to be safe. So I'm cooking a Beyond Burger for lunch. Those tend to be uh, pretty smelly. Like it's not like a good smell or a bad smell. It's just like the beyond beef smell. So we will see if this can uh, make my kitchen smell a little bit less like a beyond burger. So it's loaded up with the little fragrance pack. I'm pretty sure I just pressed that button. Yep, light is on. And I think the little fan is spinning. I think I can hear like a slight humming sound. Yep, it has the smell coming out. I can hear it spinning. Time to get cooking. All right, Beyond Burger is cooked. I am ready to eat. Can confirm, Sensei Go did not 
neutralize the smell, cover the smell, even like have any smell in the room really at all. I don't know what the purpose of this is supposed to be. Like Skylar and I were joking that it's for you to carry around and sniff, but that's really the only way you can smell it is if it's really close and you like inhale, I guess. Like this is expensive and you have to charge it. Why not just bring like a little room spray everywhere you go? I was pleasantly surprised with some of the other Scentsy products, but this one is, uh, I think this one's a big fail. All right, I am drawing a bath in there. I have my Scentsy Endless Sea Soak ready to go. So let's go pour it in, get into the bath, and uh, give it a try. All right, I just got out of the bath, and I have to say, after how much I really liked the bath bomb, I'm a little bit disappointed in the Sensi Soak. I used to use Epsom salts all the time when I was an athlete in high school because I was constantly sore, constantly pulling muscles. I think when I was looking at the package label on the Sensi Soak, I think it's just Epsom salts with some like fragrances and moisturizer, and my skin doesn't feel as soft and moisturized as it did with the bath bomb. It doesn't have that same like silky feeling that I was just like living for yesterday. It did smell pretty good though. I did like the scent. This is not a product that I would buy, but since I have it, I will use it. There's definitely nothing wrong with it. But those bath bombs, those bath bombs I think were, were the highlight of the Scentsy products that I tried. I really tried to be as unbiased as possible and go in with an open mind so that I could give these MLM products a fair shake and honest review because a lot of the claims and reviews that you see about these products saying they're so amazing are from the distributors. So of course they're gonna say that because they want you to buy it. They want you to think it's amazing and they make money off of that. And it's also hard with multi-level marketing companies in particular because they can't be held liable for what the individual distributor says. So, you know, Karen over here selling her lip sense can say that it's gonna last 72 hours and can survive an atomic bomb because she isn't an employee of the company. The company can't be held liable. So it can be hard to see through the smoke and the mirrors and find out what these products are really like. I would love to hear your experiences with multi-level marketing, if you were ever a distributor for one, or if you ever bought product from like a family or friend who was part of one. What was that like? What were the products like? Were you pleased? Were you not pleased? And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you here. We are on the long road to 1 million subscribers. We're approaching 900,000, which is pretty freaking cool. I am so glad to have this little corner of the internet where we can just be fun and silly and try things and laugh at ourselves and, and work on our confidence. It's a lot of fun. And I, I love it so, so much. So thank you for being part of it. Thank you for making my life and my channel amazing. I'm gonna stop ranting. I love you guys so much and I will see you next time. Bye.